So I took some foil, placed it over a shape which fitted with some of her sketches, and cut out a piece of paisley. That took a minute or two. And she was so quick. <laughs> So you then have a shape that you can test out and actually physically see it on the head, okay, before you start blocking and things like that and things. So working with the foil and the blocks is a brilliant, quick way of starting to think about shapes. You can even paint designs on it and things like that, yeah. Um, as long as it goes no further than your sketch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels like. Yeah, so it's 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 with a, it's great with the no tips, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's definitely a look. <laughs> that's it. That's my hat. <laughs> if I ever join Facebook. It's like a new question. It's like a new question. You know what? That's the vibe. Yes, that's a little bit. Right, dyeing. Dyeing. Dyeing on dyes. You heard dyeing on dyes before. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you can't buy the little pots and we're in the little sachets. It tends to just come as machine dyes and, and things like that. You can get those. You can get these. In, in where I was. In really? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Yes. Because I... Like it's multi-purpose dye? Yes, because I was reading it and you just... I think you have to iron it right at the end to set it. Oh. Cause that's it wasn't fabric paint? No, no. It was pots of dye. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so... Oh, hang on. No, two... Pens. No, it was that. Yes, and there was pens that were dyed. Pens. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can get the fabric picks and things like that. No, not that little. Bit. There's a dial on is an option, and also these Jacquard acid dyes, which is like the Jacquard J A C Q U A R D. These are very good as well because you can just work with small amounts at a time. Jacquard is very good if you want some really fresh, bright colours. It seems to be better than dye. Okay. Dye on the colours tend to be just slightly toned down. Okay. So if you want something really fresh. Yeah. But of course it depends on the colour you start with. If it's slightly dirty toned, if it's a cream or an ivory or something like that, then you're never going to get a really fresh tone from it. Um, but yeah, both are good for us. I have, because I'm just doing this very quickly, usually you would have, we've got some little plug-in hops under there, but you would keep this on a hob to keep it hot. I'm just using hot water at the moment. You can work with small amounts in a, like a plastic container in the microwave as well, if you're just dyeing small amounts of ribbon. You can even dye beads, like fake pearls, kind of plastic translucent beads and things like that as well. They're quite nice, you get a really nice pale tint on them. Um, sometimes when you're dyeing, it's, it, it will dye very, very quickly. You literally have it in for seconds. Sometimes things need to be much, much longer. For example, like some feathers, and particularly if you're wanting a really strong colour as well. So you might need to leave it in there for half an hour or so. So you need to keep the hob on at a low heat to keep it at a hot temperature. Okay. So, the density will demand how much you put in, okay? So I've got, I've filled up my pan about a quarter of the way, okay? Keep, if you're wanting to redo these colours and things like this, just keep notes, okay? So put a quarter of a pan of water to a quarter of a teaspoon dye. You, you could also mix dyes like paints as well. They will come in a range of standard colours and you can mix small sections to get the exact colour that you want. Which can happen really quickly or it can take you all day to get a colour that you want. Is that quarter of a pound of water I'm just giving these as examples. Oh, right. Okay. You take notes because if you, say for example, you were dyeing some feathers, 
or a meter of cinema or something, and you realize halfway through the project you needed more, and you want the same color, it gives you, and it's like baking, it gives you a list of ingredients and, and weight. <coughs> Ah, ah. What's that? It goes by. Well, I use acid dyes quite a lot, and it normally goes by the weight when the fabric's wet. But the cinema is like the so. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, when you buy the washing machine ones, isn't it? It says it will do this amount of fabric and things. The way that I've always used dye is because with millinery, you're tending to work with quite small amounts, is by the measuring method in terms of. If I know I'm wanting a pale colour, I will literally start off with some people, you know, if you're being really technical about it, you measure it out, like weigh it out and things like that. If you've got really immaculate, immaculate really accurate <laughs> scales, um, then that can be a way of being really, really accurate about it. I tend to go by the quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, this amount of water. Mm. Now, you put your dye in the boiling water. You need something to set it. Dependent on what you're dyeing depends on how you set it. So you need an acid or an alkaline. Even though these, this does say acid dye, you can still use alkaline with them. Anything, a previous student had a really good way of saying this, which just puts it all in a nutshell. If it's an animal product, so wool, silk, feathers, you use an acid, so you use vinegar, okay? All of the products, you use salt, just standard cheap table salt, okay? Vinegar, if you dye feathers, it stinks. So I'm going to put some of um, these straws in, so I'm going to use salt. So, just adding a good salt. <laughs> tell her why I cook. Most of the time, the setting agents, if you're saying you're dying, have you, have you all dyed something at home, like in washing machines? Nope. You add, you can get proper fixatives, um, but actually it says with the dial on washing machine dye, you put the dye in the drum and then you put so much salt on the top of it and then you put your clothes in and you set it on the wash, okay. The setting agent sets the dye, so a bit like the iron you were saying, it's the heat and, and mm -hmm. all those things that help set the dye. If you're wearing something, you keep washing it and washing it, you want the dye to be set which you still do with millinery, but you're not going to be washing it in the same way as you would a t-shirt, okay? So you're setting it, but the likelihood, because you rinse it after, so the likelihood of it actually going and getting washed is not going to happen. But you still need to set it, but it's, say it's where you can be a bit more. Which is a rain, rain won't make it run. No, because you rinse it. You see, this is the problem when, you know, I, I've had this at Stevens a few times when you're, when you're all day in the back area, which is pretty much outside, it's just got a roof over it, in the middle of winter, and you've got somebody going, you have to match the colour of that fabric, I want the feathers to match the colour of this fabric exactly. And you're there doing it. It's not right, you take it upstairs, you put it in the daylight, because always look at it in the daylight. Right, go back down, it needs a little bit more blue, just a tiny little blue, then you've got a little bit too much blue and you're, mm -hmm. and you're there. And, um, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you do it and you think, right, I've got it exactly. I've got the right amount of time because you have to time it to get the right intensity. I've got the right amount of time, I've got this, I've got that. And then you do it and you're like, I'm doing this for the food. Don't go wrong. Don't go wrong. It's nearly six o'clock. And, um, and, and you're like, oh my god, it's too dark. Because it will always look darker when it's wet. So you have the wet sample next to you so you know the shade it should be when it's wet. Right, quickly, take it to the sink. Rinse, 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 rinse. Rinse with hot water, rinse with boiling water. <laughs> 
It could, no. <laughs> it ruins the fabric. And it will get rid of, even with really hot water, you can get rid of some of it, but you will never get fully get rid of it. Anyway. I'll just let him go like that. Same with the vinegar? So maybe a tablespoon. Same with the vinegar? Yeah. Yes. A good old switch. It's about a tablespoon for a quarter of a pan. Mm. Or half a pan. With this size. Always use a separate pan. Don't use your cooking pans because it's... Is it carcinogenic? It's basically top of And then... Some... Materials... You may work with wet. The fabric absorbs much quicker into wet material. Okay, um, particularly if you had a big bundle of material and it was you, you worried it was going to get a bit creased, wet it. And you try and get the full thing in as quickly as possible. Unless you're dip dyeing, which is this effect, where you go from lighter to darker. So you put it in and then you just pull it out very, very slowly. Now this dye is quite pale, also the water's cooled down quite a bit, but already we've got that pale pink. So if I was wanting to make this more intense, I would have a bit more dye in there and I would very, very slowly pull it out so that the area, the, the area at the bottom has had a lot more time in the dye. So I would time those different sections. I would say, right, I put the full amount in, I leave it for five seconds. You can get little wooden tongs and things like that, tweezers and stuff, so you're not putting your hands in the boiling water. Like, well, this isn't boiling anymore. Um, gloves, really good idea, latex gloves. Rubber gloves are fine, but um, you don't get as much touch. And then you slowly, slowly, slowly pull it out. And again, you time it. So you're thinking, right, I need this density to density of colour at the moment, so I need to spend five minutes pulling it out. Or I need to spend 30 seconds pulling it out. So it's all about time in relationship to the amount of dye and the colour that you're wanting. Okay. So, as you can see, that's parasitical, which has dyed up quite nicely. So once you've dyed that, you then, once it's finished with the dyeing, you take it and you rinse it thoroughly with cold water. Okay, until the, the water is no longer 